So welcome back to the sawmill, friends. It's a nice day in Tennessee. It's about 55 degrees. That's really nice for this time of year. What's the date? February the 20th. It's still winter time and we're in the 50s. Let's get to work, guys. Got a lot going on today. So before we head up to the sawmill and I start fighting that walnut log that we started in the last video, and if you didn't see that video, there's a link down below. Go watch that one. Before you watch this one, you can see all my struggles I had with that log yesterday. It sure was a pain, but we're gonna finish it up today. So before we head up there, I got the excavator warming up. I need to cut some firewood out of some walnut scrap down here at the trailer and also dig up two tree stumps. You guys hang in there. This is the leftover walnut from yesterday that we hauled in. That one had a dog leg, that's why it got cut off. And this one here is the same reason. I'll cut these in the middle and we should get four sticks that are 16 inches long, which is the size for my firebox. So we'll still get some firewood out of this, even though we didn't get any lumber. Yep, that chain's dull. Well, now that I think about it, I was using that chainsaw last night on that walnut log. And if you guys saw that video, I'm pretty sure the chain hit that ceramic uh, insulator. That's probably why it's dull. We'll drop these off and I'll get the uh, track loader out right here in a little while, take these down to the log splitter. Here's a question for you guys out there that are running excavators every day or maybe just on the weekends. It don't matter, I guess. I'm a rookie. I've only got about eight hours on this machine. When you drive your excavator, are you guys using your feet on these handles or just your hands? I'm using my hands. I'm six foot two and uh, this just feels kind of awkward trying to drive with my feet like that. Is that the right way or am I looking like a rookie when I do it with my hands? Let me know down in the comments what you guys are doing as far as driving these things. I'm sure I'm doing it wrong. Looks like I've got an audience today. We've got the girls out here with us doing a little free ranging. Hello girls. All right guys, we're behind the chicken house. And I know I need to put the rest of the siding on this building. We're gonna do it, I promise. And this right here's something else we need to do is get rid of these old stumps cause I'm tired of mowing around them. There were two maple trees here when we bought this property. I cut them shortly after we moved in and you can't see it, but there's a stump right there underneath all that dirt and a little bit of a stump right here. So I'm gonna do my best to try to get in here and get this ripped out and cleaned up a little. I'll probably haul this stuff over to the uh, compost bin and let it sit there and rot once we get done. And hopefully it won't take me long with the Cotto excavator. Have I mentioned to you guys how much I like that machine right there? I should have got that years ago. 
And for you guys out there that have property and you're on the fence about getting a mini excavator, you want one, but you're not sure if you need one, pull the trigger. I should have got that machine years ago. It's nice to have around. I don't think this will take me too long. Those stumps are pretty rotted to begin with. take too long We got it out of there. So if I ever stop posting videos, you guys know what happened to me. I've gone into the stump removal business. I tell you what, that's fun right there. I think I could do that about every day. All these small roots I'll put in the compost pile, but those big stumps right there. We'll take those to the burn pile with Mr. Cotto and get rid of them. It will take them way too long to break down to full with them. Well, as soon as I got off the machine and poured a cup of coffee, the girls came right over. I knew it wouldn't take them long. They'll get in here and scratch this up and it'll look just fine here in a day or two. But we'll definitely get Mr. Cotto here in a few minutes and get rid of these stumps. In case I haven't mentioned it, I really like that excavator. You guys realize how long that would have took me by hand? I'd have been out here for hours. Man, that's a nice machine. Right, guys we're up here at the sawmill we'll finish up this walnut that we worked on yesterday and there's where we stopped i had to cut that piece out and you guys saw the video it was a day killer right there but we know now where the ceramic is so we can avoid that hopefully we got two pretty good slabs so far so that's good right there some good looking walnut so I'm thinking I'm gonna flip this over 180 because I don't want to cut this off and be stuck with seven foot slabs. I want them to be eight feet long. You know, longer the better, that's more money. You're losing board footage if you cut it off. And I don't know where that insulator is or how deep it is inside the log. So we're gonna flip it 180. I may have to come over here with some dunnage and put under that to mimic the offset right there so we can get a nice flat cut. 
It's gonna take some finagling, but I think it'll work out okay, unless there's more insulators in that log. Hopefully there's not. We got a brand new blade on the sawmill, Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. If you want those blades, call Joe. Cell phone number is in the video description. It looks like the girls have followed me up here, like they always do, until the sawmill gets turned on. They leave when that happens, they don't like the noise. All right guys, we've got two slabs cut and we've not hit anything yet. So hopefully we'll have a good day up here. I do need to check the location of the pith on both ends. We are two and a half inches down on the uh, far side right there. That's something you wanna make sure you do when you do live edge slabs. You wanna keep that pith at the same location parallel to the bed on both ends. That way you get nice uniform grain and all of your slabs down through here. And the slab that you cut out of the pith, make sure the pith is right in the middle. And you have two options when you do that. You can either take that slab and put it up on the sawmill and edge it on both sides and get rid of the pith and have two uh, slabs that are narrow or leave it in there and dry it that way and just make sure your customer knows if they pick out that slab, the pith is in the middle. Some guys don't care because you will have some cracking in the middle, even if the pith is buried right there in the center of the slab. And they like to pour potsy in there and do all that crazy stuff. So you'll find a customer for it. Just make sure you tell them it's in there. Don't sell it to them unless they know it's there because that may not be what they're after. And they go down the street and buy from somebody else next time. And next thing you know, they're telling that guy, you're selling slabs full of pith wood and you're not telling nobody. So. There's a customer out there for it. You just gotta decide what you wanna do with it. I'll leave mine in it for now because I have some epoxy customers who look for that. So it's no big deal for me. If it was gonna be for personal use, I'd get rid of it. I can't stand it. Let's check the location on the operator side. And I am so glad we've not hit any ceramic insulators today. I was gonna take a hostage if I did. Good deal, two and a half inches down. So. By using this little piece of dunnage right here on the bottom, that was the same thickness of the slab that we sawed yesterday that hit the ceramic insulator, we was able to keep the pith nice and straight on both ends. That's a win right there. I got a haircut this morning. I've not had one in almost three months and I feel about five pounds lighter. So we're gonna pull these two off and see what we got to work with. We might throw some water on them. And I got a lot of washboard up here I was going too slow. But with these live edge slabs, it's okay if you go slow and have some washboard. After these are killed and dried, they're going to get surfaced and that will be gone forever. You'll never know that washboard was there. And if you go slower, 
it gives you a better chance of having flatter slabs. If you go fast, you could take a dip. Even though I'm running the Super 70, which is more capable of taking care of logs like this, if you go too fast when you're making your really wide cuts, and we're maxing out the throat on this sawmill today, there is a chance you could take a little bit of a dip right there. And I don't like that because most of my stuff is wholesaled to two or three customers and they will buy whole logs at a time and uh, they buy them green, they'll take them to their kilns and you know, dry them later on. I'll even have to kiln dry them most of the time. I think this one will keep though, I like it. But when they come and pick that stuff up, they inspect the slabs. They don't wanna see little waves in there because that's problems they'll have to deal with after kiln drying. And they may lose so much material after they plane it, it loses a lot of value. So I go slower, you may see some washboarding. I don't care because these are nice and flat. And you know they're flat because when I start pushing them off this stack, they stick together. That's always a good sign. They stick together. And my goodness, they're heavy. Man, got some good color right there. Hopefully it's curly like that last slab. So that first one was kind of heavy on the sap wood cause it was right there near the bark. Look at there guys, that's what I'm talking about right there. I'm not exaggerating this or faking anything. I'm never gonna fake anything on this channel. I got nothing to gain from it. There's too many guys out there that know what they're doing that will call me out on it and call me, it's really fast. So check this out when I talk about flatness. When it's hard to move the slab off of the log on your mill, you know what's flat. It's almost like a suction right there where it, it don't want to come up or come off rather. There we go. Man, this thing's heavy. How wide is this? 28 inches right there. It's going to vary just a little, but nothing less than 27 or 26 down there. Man, these are nice. And they're heavy. If you guys don't care to get the other side of that, we'll get this down and take a look at it. 